Hello. Are we live, Tom? We should be live. Hello, it's Russ. Uh, I, I am here uh, as the wingman today for Tom, who is going to be doing some live sculpting. Uh, Tom, say hi. Hello, hello. My name is Tom. I am one of the sculptors on the uh, amazing Steam for Sculpting and Art team. And I'm here together here today with Russ. And today we'll be looking over Law Sam and we're looking at her banner. We're gonna she won the vote. And I know it's been a very heated match, Titus and Law Sam almost neck and neck, but it looks like Law Sam just pushed it over the edge. Right, Christopher Bates in chat says hi, David Millington says I hear voices. Well that's I'm good. Hoping that that's him <laughs> helping us out on our audio and not a cry for help. Excellent. Right, let's let's get cracking. So on the left we can see what we have the old banner for Lausan. And uh we've been asked to basically redesign it, reimagine it and re envision it for whatever purposes. For your viewing pleasure. So we me and Russell had a little you know, pre discussion about what sort of ideas we want to push for Lausan's banner. I'm totally open for suggestions in the chat. But my first thought is, so Lausanne herself, uh, I'm now holding a figure. Uh, she's on some ruins of some old um, elven architecture. And what I'm thinking that we do is we incorporate maybe a statue of one of her followers, half buried in the ground, vine. I, wanna, I really want to keep all this, all like the vines growing around it. I, I love that kind of aesthetic, but Basically, we're going to break it, break an arm off. We're going to pose it and make it feel like this is a statue that's aged and dug half in the ground. And that's that's her banner. It's like some long forgotten hero or some long forgotten champion. I think that would look quite cool. I'm excited for that. That sounds really funny. Right. So, starting off, we have a banner and we have a fresh base that we can start building her banner from. So, skulls, lots of skulls. <laughs> so one thing I'm going to focus on right now is uh, let's get one of her followers up on the screen. So here's a really early version of her, of one of her followers. Um, he has his hair down and flowing, and we're going to see if we can repose this and repurpose this to create a cool looking statue. So first things first, let's grab one of his swords. I'm feeling like maybe, what do you reckon, Russ, like the classic sword pose of like clutching the sword in both hands in the middle like a uh, yeah i i like a yeah i can imagine that being very statuesque um that should look pretty cool sweet maybe with the head slightly bowed you know like a oh yeah like you know yeah, sort of like almost like he's praying to the to the god oh head. yeah absolutely all right let's get that let's get that head moving first so there's been some really there's some really cool tools in ZBrush now that allow you to finally do movements and move stuff all acro across you know different subtool boundaries, which basically each part of the mesh is broken into a separate section. And before you could move one, and now you can select multiple and angle them all at the same time without having to worry about moving them individually. So that we can now grab his head, his hair, and have him looking down a bit remorseful yeah that move all feature so good yeah I'm just going to bring his neck up. so we've moved his head down we move his neck neck back a bit and I'm going to bring some of his, hat, his uh, hair strands out as well because it's going to be an epic statue Epic statues usually have epic hair. Yeah. Just ask the Romans or the Greeks. <laughs> yeah, that is looking really cool. I like, I like that um, that head angle. Yeah, I'm gonna add a bit of sort of swirl into this hair. Pack all these details in that make it look really cool. I know it's a minor detail, Tom, but do you want to angle those eyes down as well so they're looking down towards the sword? Okay, so do we have him? Do we? Yeah. Well, do we have these eyes 
looking down towards the sword or up because he's absolutely super angry. Let's try both and see which we like the feel of. Or we could have them blank. Okay. Mm. Uh, he looks a bit... He looks a bit... He's a bit, a bit stunned if you do He's like, ah, my sword! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's bring these back up. Let's half bury them. Make them slightly bigger. And I like the fact that he's still got uh, sculpted eyes in there because it's very statuesque. That is pretty cool. And you'll notice that on all, all the miniatures we cover all those up and we smooth the eyes all over but I find I don't know about you Russ but when I when I sculpt I always find it so useful having irises in because you can always you can instantly like feel the character yeah definitely it just feels really weird sculpting with blank eyes it feels like you're sculpting a zombie <laughs> who's talking in the background yes it's me it's Russ hi it is I <laughs> some detail and texture to that. Let's add some more flow to this hair and then we'll move on to posing these arms which would be the biggest task. So we need to think about how much of him do we want to use and how much of him do we want to stick in the ground. So a really good um, uh, point Russ came up with like prior to this uh, the stream he, was, he said uh, well we don't want the banner to look like it's actually a follower so we need to make this larger than life so it needs to be larger than a follower and we need to make sure that people go, don't go, oh, why is there a random follower next to all the other followers, but he's half on the ground and he's in a sinkhole. So we need to go through and bring in one of the characters for scale. And let's, let's use, this is one of the uh, one of the ranges. And let's figure out, well, how far do we want him in the ground and how big? So I'm thinking we go for sort of a traditional Roman bust. So let's uh, slice him at the waist. And let's see how that looks. Now, if you look at that compared to the original banner, some scaling issues. Like the, the original banner is really, really tall, and this is really, really short. So I'm feeling we could at least punch him up this big, then he definitely won't be as big as a follower. And then we can. Yeah, I think that works. yeah. and then what we can do is we can just slice one of his arms off, like here, so it's, you know, it snaps off. And this one, we can maybe lose an ear. Um, we can have big cracks going all the way down his torso. So this is our plan, and I think that's a really good base to um, to start from. So this is our guide. But we consider Tom just just looking at that. Oh yeah. Break, break off the tip of the bow and have it resting on the base. Oh yes. Okay, that's a great idea. Yeah. So ooh. let's split that off. Okay, so that's that's something that we can, if we put this on here, it'll remind us that we need to break something off and have it rest on the base. Okay. Great. Now, it'll just make it feel and look a bit more like, oh, this is a statue and it's obviously falling apart, and not that the someone's received the model and the, the boat snapped off. Because, mm. yeah, the part's right there. Okay, let's go back to our guy. So we know we only need him up to the hips, so the great thing about that is we can now remove all these parts underneath that we don't need. So let's remove these and we need to remove part of his body. So let me just select all that lower body. Get rid of that, close holes. And I don't think we'll need most of this skirt. I'll delete most of it. Just while you're doing that, we are as always open for business for questions, conversation, any anything people want to ask us. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We'll, we'll do our best to answer if we can. Absolutely. Right. I think these side loops can squidge them up a bit. Otherwise, it might look a bit weird cut off. Okay. So I'm thinking of putting like a crown or like a tiara on his head to represent this as like some ancient elven hero to make him feel a bit more different to the followers. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. And what I can actually do, and the great thing about digital work is I can look at it, look at his body and go, okay, well, what, what part of this can I sort of duplicate and move and use to represent like a crown or tiara? Well, if we look at his belt, that's a great smooth shape. 
Let's uh, duplicate his belt. Bring it up. Flip it around. And we have a tiara we can now pop on his head. Oh, apparently I'm being told I am really hard to hear. Could you just tweak me up in the volume settings? A bit sure, and sure thing. Then uh, maybe just bring yourself down a touch to compensate and then we should be good. Well, of course, of course. Uh, I just brought you up now. Please can everybody let me know if that sounds better. Can everybody hear me better than I, than I was before? Well, we'll we'll see. In, in approximately thirty seconds, we'll know the answer. <laughs> Somebody wants to know about the dragon lady. Um, well, we can talk oh. about the artistic process for for stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we are not the right people to ask when it comes to rules because uh, we haven't seen any of them. Um, but uh, we can talk about the process uh, uh, of making them because obviously things like the dragon lady change the change the balance, change the dynamics on what we've been doing with our. Um, characters oh yeah that was a really fun project and you're asking absolutely the right people i sculpted yeah. the dragon lady and, and i sculpted uh, the dragons team combo oh apparently the the sound is much better now excellent Brilliant. thank you very much for the uh awesome. for pointing it out to us folks thank you very much i'm glad that was at the beginning and not the end that is very <laughs> useful okay okay this tiara is looking cool let's get some jewelry and decoration on it what do you think what would be a good sort of representation of elven jewelry um i feel that seeing as it's lawson that we're dealing with something that has a leaf theme mm -hmm. maybe there's a maybe like an oak leaf with a gem crystal in it at the center there or something and That's then some idea. of that something like that in the middle and what i could do is i can mirror that oh yeah that's looking sweet Okay, so I can split that off. And um, what I'll do is I'll curve it so it matches the curvature of the tiara. Just like that. I can push that in here. That's great. So we've got to start thinking about in this, even this early of the design phase, when you start thinking about, well, how is this going to work for print or viewing, for example, in a digital simulator? So people are only going to see it really, really small and really far away. So, and when it comes down to print, we I know we can't have this gap between the hair and the tiara. So I'm going to bring the hair up, make sure I'm filling all this backspace here. It'll look a little funky, but once I bring all the, the rest of the hair in, it'll all come together. Uh, we have faith. <laughs> so while you're, while you're doing that then, Tom, um, sculpting uh, Kira, the dragon lady, cool. tell us about that. <laughs> she was so fun to sculpt and obviously uh, may or may not be Game of Thrones references in there but uh, yeah. it was she was wonderful to sculpt and it was an absolute pleasure as always to work from Doug's amazing artwork and also inject some of our own uh, some of our own work into there yeah he knocked it out of the park on that one it's a lovely design uh... absolutely and there's a lovely baby dragon courtesy of uh, Ben now, that's a, it's that a, did, I was going to ask you, did you use, so, so she's holding a baby dragon and yes. her banner is a, is a baby dragon hatching. Did you use Ben's baby dragon sculpt to put the one in her hand so that it's got a, uh, it, it's got a, um, sort of a coherency across the two pieces or oh. did you just sculpt a new one? Absolutely. No, I, I used Ben's dragon and edited it ever so slightly. So what we have is a, it's a coherent across the board that it's the same same type of dragon but maybe slightly smaller it's basically it's really important to make sure we sell all the models as a coherent set so they, they all feel like all part of the same same group and the same species as well so is she basically holding the runt of the litter absolutely amazing yeah the, the yeah i just oh have we have we shown the banner for kira i thought we'd shown the complete set uh, chat can tell us have we shown Kira's banner or or are we accidentally drifting into spoiler territory? <laughs> it's one of those things because we we sculpt so far ahead that I can't remember if that's something that's been announced because I know Ben sculpted the banner and he did a fantastic job. Well, I, I've got the um, I've got our internal chat um, running 
uh, from from Steamforged HQ. So if it suddenly lights up with uh, <laughs> <laughs> with notifications, I know we've drifted into. Uh, we we'll get we we'll get a message from uh, from HR from Mark. and the uh, yeah. marketing team saying, oh, "Tom, we need a chat. <laughs> Stop the stream. Stop the stream. We get swatted." Oh no! Don't. Uh, it, a full set was at release event at Steamforged HQ, and that's from Dave Millington. So we can take that to the bank. Brilliant. So yes, that, that banner has been shown. Um, Butak says maybe you could break some of his head apart once we get to that stage. Absolutely, I'm going to put uh, cracks straight for his face. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to take his nose off quite yet, but I'm definitely going to do some damage to his face. I want to make this feel really roughed up. Something I've done previously, and I'm sure you've done similarly, is I've I've applied uh, like roughness and noise to a um, flat plane, and then used it as a boolean slicer to create chunks of rock falling away that have a nice rock-like texture at the point of breaking. That's a really good idea. I really like that idea. I've not actually used uh, noise on a plane yet for that. Yeah, you That's apply cool. noise to the plane, and then you just do a mesh extract just to thicken the plane a tiny amount for the boolean it works really yeah. well so I got, I got a plane set up and ready to go but i've not thought of actually putting like noise detail on the plane obviously that's going to make the cut feel a lot more um natural so how i'm going to do these arms i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to split one off pose one and then mirror it across and slightly adjust it because that way i don't need to worry about them intervening with each other too much yeah just to just for for everyone playing along at home uh, yes, someone says there's a much higher risk of spoilers if Matt's on the stream. That's certainly true. That's um, true. At the point where, um, if you're working with the mirror tool on, at the point where something crosses in the middle, it can get really confusing. So it's far easier when we're trying to do something like this to make one arm without any mirroring turned on and then duplicate it and flip it across. Yeah. And what I'm doing right now, I'm sort of going like doing a pose of myself, just thinking, well, how am I going to hold this? So. A tool that we always use. In fact, I've got it just around here. Whereabouts is it? Oh, it's just on the floor. You'll be able to see it in a second. I have a little poseable mannequin. And what I do is, very often when we're doing posing, is instead of spending about half an hour Googling for, re for different poses, I'll try and do the pose on this little mannequin. And it's really, really good like reference because it's all physical. And you kind of have the bounds of like the restrictions a body has. So, for example, you should be able to see it just about here. But I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, how are these arms going to bend? Where are they going to bend? And what feels like realistic? So, it looks like we're going to bend them at the elbow, bring them up to the middle. And if in doubt, always use reference. Always, always use reference. It'll it just to help you. Like when I was learning to do art. When I was younger, I was like, I'm not going to use reference because all the, all the good artists don't use reference. And that that came back to bite me on the arse. It really did. <laughs> that seems like such a useful piece of kit there. Someone's saying we should go for the full black metal pose, open hand, raised to the sky, you know, one hand clutching. Oh, his, don't. Uh... I'd love to do that. That's great. That's such a good idea. I almost prefer that idea now. This one's <laughs> boring now. Well, see, as you only pose one arm like that, that arm could be pressed down. Oh, we then have to change the whole head. And, oh, no. We do, after all, uh, you've already had a third of your time. So. I know. Oh, it goes so fast, doesn't it? It flies by. Matt and I both yesterday couldn't believe that we'd had a total of two hours on stream. Ah, that's ridiculous. You know, we need, we need to um, do this more often. We need to do a lot more streams. Because I don't think anyone would object to that. It is so fun. It really is really fun. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is I think I might have one arm up holding it and the other arm is going to snap off like somewhere on his arm. That way I don't need to worry about posing two arms together. And we can focus on getting like a cool grip around the hilt. So I think you should be holding it just above uh, on the actual uh, scabbard. Yes. There's something about, particularly with things like statues, I like the idea that they are presented as, with for the elves as being a little less like obviously warlike and a little more contemplative, if philosophical. So yeah. that kind of little touch really helps sell that, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Like I can imagine his other arm. Uh, if I just tweak this here, well, I can imagine. I can imagine his other arm being sort of 
out to his side, like, and uh, you know, facing up, but like, uh, he's contemplating life in some in some way, something more philosophical rather than uh, a warrior. I have dagger, I have sword. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of posing fingers, which is a lot of artists' bane, and and, uh, and with good reason. Excellent reason because posing fingers, it's not great. But it's fine because what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly pose it and once I'm done I can merge this all together, bash it up and you won't even notice the dodgy posing. It's brilliant. <laughs> Hooray. Hooray for technology. And broken pillars. And statues. You're probably hearing a lot of clicking and and I swap between ah. my, my, my mouse and I swap between my tablet all the time because I like the precision of the mouse. And then I'll go for my tablet for masking and all sorts. Yeah, I I mean, I was um, amazed to watch uh, one of our amazingly talented graphics uh, um, uh, artists, Abby, and she pretty much works exclusively with a tablet, even when she's just no, like navigating around her desktop. And I just... I was in awe. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I have no idea how she she can work like that. It's baffling to me. I used I used to work that way, and then as we work in more different programs, I'm finding myself needing needing like the capabilities and the accuracy of a mouse more. Mm. And uh, do you find yourself as you're jumping like you know? Because yesterday I found myself moving between uh, three different programs, and they all have subtly different ways of navigating a 3D view space. Do you find yourself like jumping into a program and pressing the Alt key because that's what you've been doing all morning, and but that's not how it works in this program, and that does something different. And sometimes, sometimes I have a little brain fart, and my and I, I everything controls completely wrong. And I'm like, what's going on? It should be working. It should be working. Oh, yeah, it's a different program. I should know that. It's more of an issue for me because I'm old. Ah, I see. See, for me, it's like it becomes becomes like muscle memory. Um, like I'll jump into one program and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even need to tell myself or remind myself what the controls are. But if you ask me what the controls are for that program, I'm going to draw a blank. Like, Oh, well, how many times do does one or the other of us ask a technical question? And one of the school team knows the answer, but we only know the answer if we open the program and go yeah. through the process. Because it's like someone said to me once, and I agree completely. It's a bit like if you if someone asks you the lyrics to a particular part of a song, you have to sing the song to get to that point. Because the, the 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 knowledge exists in an extremely specific format in your brain. Yeah. And it works exactly the same as this. Like it works just like uh, it's basically it's just it's muscle memory. And I know that if Russ goes, oh, uh, how do you know? Do you know what this hotkey in ZBrush is? I'll say, no, I don't. But I'll open ZBrush and tell you in in five minutes. Yeah, I'll get to the point where I need it, then my brain would just press it. Exactly. So let's get his armor piece, his sleeve on. See, I don't know about this armor piece. I'm wondering if. Be better having his hand without it because I quite like his his arm bare. Maybe you could take the tiara belt theme and give him a torque on his upper arm. Yes, that's a great idea. I shall do that and I shall delete this. Before uh, so I says it's crazy watching us do this because they can only copy and paste in paint. <laughs> well. I think, yeah, that's a skill to itself. I mean, uh, yeah. Using paint without going insane is a skill to itself. It absolutely is. Are you going to position the same talk? Are you going to do some masking and extracting? How are you going to approach that? Okay, so I think I'm Actually, gonna... masking and extract to do like a vine okay. where we're a bit further down the line could be fun. Absolutely. So almost halfway through our session, actually. We so, are. You've got 35 minutes. I have 35 minutes to turn to beat this guy up. And turn him into a uh, awesome-looking statue. So <laughs> sounds like the weirdest game show challenge ever. It is thirty-five minutes to beat this guy up and turn him into a statue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd watch that show. Yeah, I, I don't know the, the it's like the it guy sounds, has to it, make a cast of him. Like, how does it work? It, it it sounds like something that would be on Dave. Oh yes, no, no, hundred percent. That's on Dave. It probably already is. Great, so I can great. 
take this and I'm going to duplicate it and we get a lovely repeating pattern down as well. I think that looks cool. And one thing we've got to make sure, because if anything is ever intended for print or production, is we can't have floating bracelets. We need to make sure that we bring all of that, all of that element and just backface it straight into the model. Nice, that looks cool. Just doubling them like that really changes their look, doesn't it? It works, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, I just need to just touch up some of the musculature here. You're actually touching on something that we have discovered uh, both in this and other projects that we've worked on, where we're creating something that's a society or a, or, or a nod to there being a culture from which they come. Taking a key shape or a key element like this and repeating it through the model really helps sell the idea that they oh, yeah. they have a, a set of cultural uh, art styles and design ethics and uh, philosophies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd love to look at like developing the god tier elves as a proper race. Like, oh yeah, that'd be so cool. I imagine like all the environments and like the cities and the, the kind of maps that we could make for it. The D and D so player cool. in me gets very excited at that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So I'm just emphasising some of the knuckles and some of the tendons because these are the most obvious parts that are being shown, and. It just adds a nice touch from a distance. Okay, right, let's get that other arm in here. So I'm actually just going to slice this arm straight off here. So he's got meant to have one arm out to the side. But I'm just going to go ahead and just cut that. And I'm going to start doing some damage on that. And there's a great set of tools in here which like just like to bevel and bash edges and have fun. We found a lot of that stuff's been super useful um, doing the digital painting, haven't we? Oh, yes, absolutely. All right, I feel like I need to add something which is a lovely classical uh, art style. And I need to uh, art theory as I want to add some contrapposto to his pose. So yeah. For those who don't know, contraposto is basically uh, alternating body movements. So, when you the traditional uh, if someone just draws a character and they're just like they're standing absolutely still, um, there's no sort of dynamic them. There's no sense of weight. But by adding contraposto, we're basically tilting the hip, tilting the torso, bringing one leg in, bringing one leg out, and basically just alternating the whole body in like an S curve, and the way these what these curves do is add more interest and like make it feel more flowing and natural and it leads your eyes up to the head and I'm just gonna add a little bit of curve to him and nothing crazy he is a statue of course but I'm just gonna tilt his head ever so slightly and I'm gonna tilt his tor torso I'm gonna rotate his torso as well So I'm going to select that, I'm going to select his body, and I'm going to rotate his body as well, excluding his hair. Hmm. And the joys of finding out everything's masked underneath, so I need to individually go in and unmask everything. Excellent. Someone in chat saying that they want more gods here, elves. Oh, well, I'd love to give more God tier elves. Do you like sculpting elves? I mean, technically, if you count Morrigan, who Sherwin assures me was an elf. Was she? At some point wow. in the past. That is a transition. That is a huge, huge change. That's incredible. Um, so it's like you could, in theory, feel the full lineup of elves. If you count Morrigan. Yeah. Finbar's fun as well. Yeah. Matt was chatting about Finbar yesterday, how much he likes him. I want my old dwarf roster one day. You know me and dwarves. Oh, I know you and dwarves. Love okay. me a dwarf. Yeah, yeah. Like, that would be the best thing in the world. Right, I'm going to add some basic chiseling to his arms, but I'm going to call this bit almost done. We can bring it in and pose it onto the base and start 
adding lots of funky damage and bring it all together. We can wrap some vines into it. So I'm just literally just gonna hammer out some chiseled areas on his arms to make it feel like it's been more it's a bit more carved. Nothing too extreme, but just enough to feel like oh, okay, yeah, that's not skin. That's actually like uh, marble or whatever material that they can they could acquire. Let's bring out the back of his arm. Okay, cool. So I'm pretty happy with this. Do you have any suggestions, Russ? Or anything you'd like to see on this? Or uh, in the no, I, th I, I think I, for, for my liking, I think it's ready to move towards uh, getting some more stuff done. Chat will catch up with us in a few moments, I have no doubt. Excellent. And until then, I'm going to make his hilt a little bit more fancy because I think we got time to make fancy. I like fancy. We, we like fancy. We all like fancy. Yes, we do. Trying to think of a cool pattern. Let's just do some straps that have been like banded across. And because the statue is slightly larger than the normal champions and the normal followers, we can afford to do this. Because usually we wouldn't be able to pack this kind of detail into the followers because they're so small. And the last thing we want to do is have painters be like, Oh, what's this bit? We're not too sure what this is meant to be because we tried to pack something too crazy in there. Mm. Let's see, what can, I, what can I insert at the top? Because the top's a bit flat. Um, Could you take your leaf design and uh, mirror it through the um, uh, Z axis and place it at the top there? Oh, okay. What, like a, a leaf sticking out the end? Yeah. Just, okay. I mean, it might look terrible. We don't know. Well, it might look terrible. It might look great. Let's try a different type of leaf. So maybe like, yeah, I take can one see of that these, working. point it out, and it becomes like that. Looks quite cool. That could work. Yeah. Okay. So I just need to split that off. I just need to mirror that. Okay. Make sure it's the right axis. There we go. That looks awesome. I mean, I think it's a shame that we can't live stream our daily work because this is pretty much what our daily work is anyway. It is. I think our legal team might have a few words to say. I know, I know. It's a shame. Okay. Cut it in there. Okay, he looks really cool. I'm not convinced about his eyes. I think I'm going to make his, um, his irises a little bigger. So let's make those bigger. Now it looks a bit funky here, but you will see that it will all look better once it's in. There we go. It looks a lot more menacing. Yeah, I like that. Okay, just smooth that ear out. Cool. I think that looks really cool as a statue. Um, it gives us plenty of chance to break stuff off. So last thing we need to get in there is, let's see, do we have it here? You're just over halfway through, just so that you know. Brilliant, thank you very much. Hmm. I just need to bring a bow in. So I'm just gonna bring a bow. Uh, I could use the bow from the other one, actually. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge this all together. And there's a process that Ross explained yesterday, but basically what it is, it's called Dynamesh. And it all merges all these separate little parts into one big part. So let me just wait for it to save. And I shall merge it all together. Merge it all together. And now I can Dynamesh it. So I usually give it a single Dynamesh to see, you can see how low resolution everything's become, it's become, we've lost all our detail. But we can now increase that to about a thousand or so, we can see how that works out. Aha, he's exploding. Oh no. That's fine. 
that works great. Okay, cool. So this is a Dynamis version. And if we zoom in, we can see that we have lost a little bit of detail around the eyes, but this actually works in our favor because what we can do is we can increase the resolution of the mesh and we can run a mask on it. And what a mask will do is it'll basically capture all the cavities in it. And this is perfect for statue stuff. So if I adjust the cavity profile a bit, you can see it gets softer and I can reduce the intensity. Here looks good. And now if I just take the mesh and slightly inflate it and invert that, slightly deflate it, you can see we get all this love. It's picked up all these details. It's picked up all the edging we've done, all the eyes, and this is perfect and ready to start bashing up and making it look cool. So I have neglected his hair, so I'm going to do some very quick folds into his hair. Shame on me. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to smooth out this transition with the metal. And I can just use the H polish now on everything I want. And the H polish is the big polish brush, which allows us to make big smooth transitions and bash everything up as much as we want. Great, that looks cool. So I'm going to bring it into the scene with our banner base and we can start positioning it and figuring out what we're going to do next. Okay, so let's bring him in. Okay. Where is he gone? Oh, and he's tiny. Let's scale him up. Excellent. All right, so let's bring our follower reference in. That looks about right, that looks quite cool. So I'm gonna make him slightly bigger. Sort of angle him. So this banner itself is actually a really tall banner. I've got one on my desk right now and it is probably one of the tallest banners I think. So we don't need to match that height, but it does need to obviously look like a banner. So. The way we make it look more like a banner is we're going to increase its scale, as we spoke about previously, and we're going to wrap vines around it and make it look a bit more interesting. So that to me looks pretty cool. Any thoughts, Russ? That is working for me 100%. Awesome. Let's see if we can nab this guy's bow before we broke it. Yeah. So I'll just have to do a quick selection, see if I can break it off. Might be a little challenge. Yeah, might be a bit of a challenge. I'll bring in a bow separately. Just one moment. Do we have any questions in, in chat at all? Uh, no, chat's just currently uh, talking about stuff. Um, saying it'd be nice to do this sort of thing more often, which I very much agree with. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, I 100% agree. That time will come. Oh yes. oh, yes. Okay, here we go. A lovely fresh bow. So let's bring that fresh bow in. Can I hide that very mutilated looking <laughs> archer? Poor oh, guy. <laughs> I know. He's, he's really been through, hasn't he? Now we can scale this one up. So we only need about half of it. So we can stick this about here. So it looks like it's coming through his shoulder. We can probably have it so it's flowing from underneath his hair. I mean, these elves have got amazing hairdos. They sure do. Someone's saying skulls. Skulls. I can put yeah. a skull at the bottom, I guess. Yeah. Mr. Christopher Bates asked for skulls at the start. Skulls you want, it's skulls he will have. Is Are you going to use something like surface noise to make it look stony? Yeah, I'm going to use a mix of surface noise. Uh, I'm going to use a couple of custom alphas I've got as well. I want to, I want to make this look really, really cool. Okay, so... Time to think about what we want to damage up and how we want to do it. So this looks pretty cool. 
let's start damaging it up with I've got some basic alphas I can use so I'm going to first get his arm going let's get that base back in so let's make it all rocky where his arm's fallen off I love this alpha and you combine it with the H polish you get this lovely lovely that's alpha. yeah very nice very nice and then there are a bunch of other alphas which look great so check this out so this will add a big crack into the surface oh yes yeah In instantly starts to feel like stone then doesn't it yeah and we can start applying these anywhere we want and just by getting a couple of cracks through him we're automatically feeling like oh yeah yeah he's made out of stone he's breaking apart he's old absolutely Let's try some straight ones. Make them nice and deep. Yeah, that looks cool. Look how cool that looks straight across his arm. That's fantastic. Love it. Yeah, Love it. Brilliant. This one is back. And his side. Oh, we can really go to town with this. So. While I'm doing this, question to chat. Which parts of his face shall I break off? What shall I bash up? What shall I gouge out? The face is uh, in your hands. I will tell you what the chat says. What do we think they're going to go with? Uh, I'm hoping just for an ear off, but... <laughs> oh, he's got an ear off! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that tip of the bow off. And buried into the ground. Let's close that. Close that. And we need to bash that up a bit to make it feel like it's... Oh, yeah, that's cracked off. Let's get that. That's a bit too extreme. Just dial that back down again. An ear. An ear has to go. Oh. All right, here we yeah. go. I, I think that's fair. Huh? I think that's fair. An ear's got to go. Uh, definitely got to go. Crack down the forehead to his right face side. Okay, what, like a... So it looks like he's got a scar, but it's actually just a huge crack. I like that. Yeah, let's get one of those in. And we can do some custom work on this one as well. Oh, look at that. See, like... I'm feeling that. See, storytelling me is like, that crack could be how this great hero died in the past. Maybe he took like an arrow to the eye or something like that. <laughs> He was an adventurer, I like guess, oh, and no. he took an arrow to the no. eye. <laughs> I can, let's bash that up. And let's bash his arm up a bit more. So I'm going to do this on a very low intensity. You can get some really cool effects just happening overall. And the lovely crumple brush. I love this brush. It's a great brush. Like if I just, you so much with the crumple brush. You can. If I just run up the back of this hair, we get this lovely sort of steps look. It's a little too far, but it's a bit hit and miss, but sometimes it works great. And let's do so let's chip some corners out with clip curve. So we can start clipping big grooves where maybe someone's missed with their axe and they've hit this statue. Nice, 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 nice. It's all about the attention to detail. Mm. And that looks way too smooth, that transition on the bow, so let's cut that up. Honestly, I'm, I won't lie, this, this is the most fun bit of the job. Like, Basically, the, bash, the, the, the bashing is that bit. Yeah, like it was brilliant. Like, uh, like the last Steam Con I was at, it was amazing showing people like this process because 
I'd get a sculpt all ready to go and say, right, here's a tablet, have fun. And, oh, you know, the amount of faces that just lit up as they bashed up the... Oh, yeah. I think there was, a, there was like a Rangosh banner, and I said, right, okay, bash it up. Some, you know, damage it as much as you want. Don't worry, you're not going to break it. And even if you do, it's fine. Because mm. it's Rangosh. <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine him being too careful with his own banners. He's probably just yeah. slam mine next. <laughs> you mean you don't think he tiptoes carefully through the world, very mindful of the damage he's caused? Oh, and like just places his banners down, one pinky out. Yeah, that's it. Asks for a cup of tea and then goes back to slaying. Yeah, well, you, you never know. It sounds legit to me. I want a springtime Rangosh skin now. <laughs> He's just like prancing through the fields. Let's get some nice slice going across his face. Okay. Quarter two, by the way, just so that you're aware. Lovely. Quarter two, and I think it's time to get some vines on this. I can dig it. Yeah. So that looks pretty cool. So let's just have a reminder of where we are at. So that's our old banner. This is our new banner. So we've sacrificed some height. But I think it's a little more cooler, to be honest. But that, that's to taste, because some people like simplified banners. At the end of the day... There's probably, in terms of the height, there's probably some, some footprint for scaling up that you've still got available with a little tweak or two, but... Yeah. You know what? I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it bigger, because why not? Let's scale the whole lot up. Yeah, we definitely have... Definitely have some real estate to play with there. That looks cool. All right, I just need to bash up the end of this hair. I'm probably going to chop it off. It looks like he's got one long dread at the back, so I need to make that feel a bit more natural and smashed up. And we're going to do some ivy, and I'm going to get some rocks in on the base. So let's see, do I have a nice rock I can use? I have a clump. That the next Rangash alt sculpt tiptoeing daintily around. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> like tiptoe Rangosh. It'd be cool if like we can make alternate versions of these sculpts with like alternate rules as well. It like, changes passive. Like you know, you can tiptoe around enemies or tiptoe on then onto enemies like bases and stuff like that. Tiptoe Rangosh, he can move through other people's hexes. Yes, because what Rangosh needs is Sneaky Pete's movement rules. That doesn't seem OP at all. <laughs> uh, I've not actually played Sneaky Pete. Oh, he's a handful. Is he fun? He's a handful. Oh, oh he's uh, he's a lot of fun. Yeah, he's really, really enjoyable. Um, my friend Lee is a big fan of movement-based... Um, uh, character builds and yeah. uh, sneak, sneaky Pete hits the table a lot for him. Hey, Mr. Matt Hart has joined us. Um, hey, Matt I wonder. Hart. Uh, hang on. Hi, Matt. Do you want to join the chat? Question mark. Or talk about putting him on the spot. Uh, we're being told not to let be allowed to design rules. Oh, really? We're not allowed to design yeah. rules? No. I wonder why they'd say that. I think I think, I think, think it's a great idea. I think not letting us design rules is the coward's way. It is. I think you should give, like, give Lord Sand some more activations as well. And, you know, I think, I think it'd be brilliant. I'm just... Uh... I am now effectively dressing this model. We have some beautiful vines because I, the elves really haven't had time to do any gardening or hort horticultural activities, so they've let it run wild, which is fine. We'll get 
some leaves in these vines as well. Uh, did either of us make the goblins? Um, so, released goblins, Sneaky Pete. Uh, no, they were all done by Ben, weren't they? Hello, hello. Hello, it's mate. A wild Matt Hart. Hey, how's Wild it, Matt has appeared. How's it going? All good. It's going pretty cool. It's going very cool. I, I'm really what liking the direction. What are we looking at here? This looks like some kind of funky banner. It is. It is Lausanne's it is funky banner. It is a re-envisioning of Lausanne's banner because uh, I don't know if you remember, but on Lausanne's base, she's got lots of elven ruins and there used to be statues on it in some of the really early versions. And we're thinking, well, right. let's revisit that. That's a neat idea. I love it. And I am a sucker for massive statues in fantasy settings. Oh, yeah, same. So, right so the one on the left is the original, isn't it? It is, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to shame the original, but I think this one's cooler. <laughs> well, speaking as the person that made the original, I'm inclined, <laughs> I'm inclined to agree. No, Good. Elven Dreamcatcher, it's a, it's a look. It is a look. There's nothing wrong so with there's a story behind the banners for the uh, original set of models, of course, because they were the one thing we had no uh, concept art for originally yes uh so they were the thing that they were the, the thing that we really had a lot of free reign on um which was nice yeah oh no, and they were great fun to sculpt the original banners oh for sure uh someone says they've shown the maelstrom goblin as well of course we've shown oh. the maelstrom goblin uh and in that model i believe uh ben did the followers but tom i you did, did the champion i certainly yeah, did ben loves his goblins <laughs> that was my one of my favorite goblin sculpts i've ever had the pleasure of doing uh she was so fun to do absolutely um, loved every minute of it it was brilliant i think it's definitely the case that we have different things that we enjoy sculpting though i mean ben loves oh, yeah. any any monsters goblins anything that's gribbly and and mean ben's all over that vine brush is cool, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad it's I'm glad I'm finding use for it. I've got so many very specific brushes on here. Like I happen to have like a, a, a clump of snow brush and like a yeah you know, a certain type of like screw cool. head and, and stuff like that. And someone's sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say someone says in chat. Christopher Bates says in chat. What is your favourite banner? Uh, call them out, folks. Uh, what is my favourite banner? I like the Rangosh one because it's got the surface that you can actually paint a design onto because it is a, a flag, isn't it, yeah. basically? That is a cool one. From a strictly sculpting and design perspective, I do like the one that Ben made for Kira with the dragon hatching out the egg. I think that's really that wicked. Is, okay. That's cool. That is a really cool battle. My personal favourite is actually Rodri's because it's got a big bear face on it and it's made of his broken sword. I mean, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. Um, I, I must confess, my my probably my favourite banner overall um, is one that we, I don't think we can talk about. It's on a model that's not released yet. Oh, yeah. I think I know the one you're talking about, and uh, that's uh, that's a pretty good one. I like that one. That's great. But we can't talk. My about trouble it. is, is um, I'm such a forgetful person. I always forget to put the banners in my figure case, so I end up just using like whatever tokens I can lay my hands on. <laughs> Rodri heroically slams down a giant beer bottle top. Yeah, or a, yeah, do, like three dolly mixtures. <laughs> I like the idea that when you crush a banner, you get to eat it. Maybe we should play the game with jelly babies. Oh, wait, that's a great I'm, idea. Yeah. I'm down with that. That's a really good idea. Matt, can you see the chat at the moment? I can, yeah. Uh, good stuff. I do like, cause there are some questions that come up I can't answer and i don't know if you, you no, let's have a little look uh someone asked what's up with the metal banners of the early access models don't we know worry we know something else is going on right now yeah mm -hmm. i don't actually what was the decision that was made on those they i know were we were trying made. to get them out to people weren't we yeah um well the last i know about it and i'm not a production person but um uh, redmore 90 uh, 69 knows knows where my brain's at um uh, hmm. They we made them all uh, and they went off for production. I don't know what happened after that, but 
um, uh, I'm sure Tom remembers me going through and, and taking all of the uh, production versions that have been made for the um, plastic kits and converting them across so they could be made in uh, resin or metal. Um, and they were all sent and and distrib and mm. sent off for, for production. Uh, I guess, you know, it's one of those things that was in progress when uh, the world decided to press the pause button on itself. Yes. Yeah. Well, look, it's, you know, it's the weekend, so we can, we'd, we'll almost certainly have a bit of a debrief and that'd be one of the things that we'll follow up on um, tomorrow and find out exactly where we're at with that and, and give an update because I think it's, important that we keep everyone up to date with what's what's what yeah. with even, it, and nice, even nice if it is on hold you know yeah be nice to nice to confirm in which case if it is on hold use dolly mixtures <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first so yeah. yes yes the ragnarok puppy banner is a uh, is a thing um the uh i i actually like titus's banner um, because it's a banner that looks like a banner, a bit like it is um, a banner. But you know what? You know what? Is... I'm. I was kind of hoping Titus would win the uh, win everything for this for this banner. I really wanted to resculpt his banner to be Titus, uh, shirtless mm. with just his helmet on, doing a big muscular pose because it's Titus. <laughs> he's, a... A, he's a demon on the battlefield. He's brilliant. I, I want a I want a Usain Bolt dabbing Titus now. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> dabbing Titus. Do you know what would be cool? Um, I can't. I'm just trying to like have a close look at the face because it's still very organic. I wonder if it was a um, a statue. If you could make it a bit more, almost like angular, stylized. Yeah, sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. almost like that Art Deco kind of feel. Almost, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be very easy to do. And basically, I can start chiseling some angles in there. So yeah, just feel like a bit more, a bit more flat surface. Yeah. Yeah, really. Especially that chin. Try and avoid rounded areas. Pointier the chin, the more elven it is. Well, also when you when you dry brush it, there'll be a few more sharper edges to kind of catch, which will help make it feel more stone-like, won't it? Yeah, that's a really good shout. What I can actually do yeah. is I can actually I can accentuate some of these edges. Right. With this brush here. And even though they look like raised edges, when that comes out and when you when it's been printed, when it's been painted, uh, you'll see that these edges are really easy to catch. So I can actually mm. purposely make edges for dry brush dry brushing to catch. Beautiful. Get some big cuts and grooves in here as well. Yeah, no, that's cool. You've got two minutes, Tom. I have two minutes. Well. Funny you should say yeah. that because I think I'm done. That looks pretty epic. Hey, do you know what we? Oh no, I, I, I was about to get very over uh, over uh, ambitious and involve <laughs> key shot, but let's not do that. Do you know what? What I would suggest in two minutes is if you've got a snow brush or a similar thing, is run it around the intersection between the the soil and the bottom of the. the oh, so it feels thing. like it's been there for a while. Yeah, just to kind of blow a little bit of debris into into that yeah, sure. what bit where it clips in. Absolutely. So let me see what I got in here. It's a lot of requests, Matt, for more streaming. Oh, good. Because I like doing streams. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I forgot. I want to follow up. Thing. Oh, a skull. Skull. Yeah, you promised. I, did um, promise I want to follow up on the map stream that we didn't get to do for technical reasons, but that's easy to do. I'd love to. And, I'd love to get uh, on that. I'm sure Matt and I might uh, be looking at uh, some stuff. A few other bits. Soon. Well, it will come as no surprise to anyone who knows that the minute we get this tabletop version done, I, I rather suspect there'll be a celebratory stream at the very least. Oh, right, once we got the online. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, whilst we've been chatting, I've been working on that in the background, and I now have uh, Titus fully working. Ah, Amazing. Yeah. That's cool. Go on, show us this snow brush. I want to see the snow brush. Well, these are is, like, that, is that it? Well, or is that just little rocks? They're basically like little soft like lumps of rocks that uh, have been softened to look like snow. And when it when it's all painted up and like done, it looks better. But basically, you you they're basically rocks have been sort of smoothed and softened and made to feel more compacted. And okay. Yeah, and what you can do is you can merge it all together and smooth it all over. So 
it looks a bit like secular at the moment, but then once it's all merged together, then that's mm. where the real magic happens. So I'll just do this. It's bit. the old uh, dynamesh and then surface noise mess around with this sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now with this, room... well, and then so it kind of blends it into one rather than three Abs or four different pieces. Absolutely. But having yeah. it separate allows you to sort of make it like uh, plan it out a lot better. So now we can smooth it all out and really sort of clump it together and we can use it. oh yeah now we're talking now i can see how much fun everyone's having i should point out that we are at oh, time do we have to <laughs> always leave them wanting more tom always oh, no. leave them wanting more oh there we go because so, that gives us a plausible reason to come back and do more absolutely i can't i can't say no to that there you go so we got the final banner and i can do a nice little pretty render here so let's hide And I'll do it front and center so everybody can see. Tell you what would be kind of fun would um, at some point is do a quick stream on um, uh, Keyshot and all the different materials and lighting settings that you tinker around with. Oh yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, that looks so cool. Right, let's uh, pause for a moment uh, so that Dave Millington can get his screen grab. Okay, I'm just setting this up for Dave, and then it'll be there. Okay, one okay. second. This this is a Dave special, this is. So I'll get one here and I'll get one next to it as well. So we can have a front and a back. Ooh. Should we get all that lovely vine detail in there? I'll zoom out, get in, and render. And any second now, a perfectly good screenshot. There we go. Boom, look at that. Right. Delightful. Press that print screen button, Dave. Well, thank you very much, Tom, for walking us through that process. The net result looks really, really lovely. Phenomenal stuff, as always. In an hour. Very good. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, everyone who joined us in chat. Always a pleasure. Never a chore. <laughs> uh, stay safe. What was it we said yesterday? Um, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash yep. your brushes. Don't lick your brushes. Don't lick your hands. Mm -hmm. Don't touch your face. Um, don't touch your face. Um, <laughs> and uh, stay tuned to the Steamforged social medias, and we will announce some more streaming as soon as is humanly possible. And I suspect while Matt and I have got the bug, that means later this week. Yep. Yeah. Make sure you follow Tom on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle, Tom? Uh, literally, is Thomas Lishman at Thomas Lishman. There you go. And Russ is at Russ underscore Charles, and I am at C4RP3R, which was back in the day, Carper. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, thank you, you really very much. elite speak. I don't know. Kids super elite, super <laughs> elite, elite fisherman I was. <laughs> thank you very much. That's awesome. Okay, Tom, we're relying on you pressing the uh, stop stream button. I'll stop stream any second now. All right. Thank Goodbye. you, everybody. Bye. Cheers.